remember I went to his house, to their house in Somerville, and they had a beehive in the house, bunnies, chickens in the backyard, a stage for the kids to play on, and I think, did you have a goat, or is that my imagination? <laughs> no goat. <laughs> no goat. <laughs> and I said, I assume this is because you came from Nigeria, and you lived in the country, and you loved animals, and he said, no, not at all. I can't stand them, but my wife loves them. <laughs> but he's always been very accepting and welcoming, and we have to keep supporting the role here because it's an essential institution. The poem of Jay. I asked A about it. He laughed and said I already knew about it. Still, he didn't seem to realize my problems were with me. I asked B about it and she was very upset and said my life was hard and her life was hard. I asked C about it and her answer was very interesting and well put, but I couldn't apply it to me. So I asked D about it and he spent many years giving me the answer little by little, but at this rate I'll never get it. I asked E about it and he made some disparaging remark and wanted to talk about money. I asked F about it, she didn't want to talk about it. I asked G about it and we had a very intense conversation, after which he disappeared and never came back. I asked H about it, but there was a question of confidence that got in the way over and over again. So I called I about it, since of all the people I know, he seems to know most about it. But by the time I reached him, I was tired and couldn't sustain the conversation. Finally, I talked to Jay about it, who is dying this year and who didn't feel very much in his life and invented a persona more consciously than most of us do. And he said he hoped he'd find feeling and learn to love and learn to die. I wished him luck and he was astonished that I was crying since we had been out of contact for years, but now all that had angered me seemed petty. Motet for mom. What would you like for Mother's Day? Did you hear the word nothing? I wish I could wave a magic wand and make you feel better. You are magic. When you're here, it's magic. You say such sweet things. I say such sweet things because I have sweet thoughts. I don't like your blouse. My darling daughter, do you think about dad a lot? Not a little and not a lot. Do you like the video about the history of the Jews? It's not a question of liking it or not liking it. I'll do whatever you think I should. Do you like it a lot when I come to visit? It's not out of this world. Why not? It's in the world. Are you thinking a lot about your life? Mm-hmm. You're such a devoted daughter. When you get a lot of food, it makes you happy. Why keep reading Henry Moore? That's enough. It's not so interesting. You can take it away. The television has the word lifetime on it. I'm tired. I don't feel like sleeping. It looks ridiculous to call this picture lifetime. Go home soon. It's enough. I don't feel good now. I don't want any more. I won't say anything. I'll just rest. Who's that? That's somebody on TV, Mom. There must be a thousand people here. We're in the emergency room, Mom, and it's crowded. Chippy cookie, I shall depart and go home. This Henry Moore sculpture doesn't impress me. What's so funny? Do you believe in God, Mom? A little. Do you like the snow, Mom? Yes, I like the snow. Do you? Yes. It's a white world. Enjoy the day. What are you coughing for? I have a cold. It's nothing, Mom. It doesn't have to be something. I became a mathematician when I started thinking about mathematics. How old are your boys, Franca? Three and six. Bring the six-year-old. Do you love me because I'm your mother or because I'm lovable? I could eat chocolate all day long. Actually, it's not true. You cannot eat chocolate all day long. I'm lucky I opened my eyes. You could never come to visit enough. This chocolate cake is heavenly. It's good for us both to see each other, especially if there's also chocolate involved. Whatever you have in your house is yours. 
Mom, what are you thinking about? You ask too much of a person. Mom, what are you thinking about lately? Set theory. Mom, what are you thinking about these days? I'm thinking about my past and about your past. Mom, what are you thinking about? The weather. What do you think about? Everything that happens at that moment. And I'll end with a very short one called These Trees. After I've left these trees, their insistent green humming will shine and all my emotions will have been just that, mine. Thank you. Hello, I'm Daniel Tobin, and I'm going to read uh, from a recent uh, book called The Stone in the Air, which are uh, versions of poems from the German of Paul Salon. I'll just read one of these, and I'm going to read two other poems. Uh, congratulations to Grolier on 90 fantastic years. This is called Parallax. These countless constellations bestowed to us to everyone. I was, when I beheld you, how long ago, out in the open among the protean other worlds. Oh, these passages galactic. Oh, this hour whose tip scale gravitates to the burden of our names. It is, I know it, not true that we lived, a breath wavering blindly between being there and not there, now and then our eyes alighting to one frequency a comet humming toward extinguished things in gorges where they would die away and time stood voluptuous on which all that is or was or will be had already burgeoned upwards and downwards and away. I know, I know and you know, we knew, did we not, we were there, yes. And sometimes when nothing stood between us, we found our way entirely to one another. one of the more hopeful Paul Salon poems, one of the great uh, poets of the Holocaust. This is called Vesper's Meditation at Wellfleet Bay. Moored on the glittering fabric of the waves, the boats endure each omnipresent fold that caves on itself to become the waves I'm watching now. Improvisational waves, meticulous ripples endlessly unwound, it seems, from the spool of themselves. These waves awash in their opulent world of waves luff the hulls and bound sails stayed by knots against the wind, though it's mild, and not one of the gales that sometimes hurls the waves onto the wharf that I will call my home for now, as though I had no other home. The wind and light that make this seascape home magnetize distance. They also move in waves. They also travel from some farther home, if one can call the roiling infinite home. Not outerward, but deeper in the folds, the inner amplitudes of bodies, home apportioned into Timbuktu's of home. Gazing at the bay, one could feel enwound with such similitudes, but for the wound, an emptiness in the idea of home. It's the thinking of it makes the knot inside the mind, the gut, the mind, the knot unraveling. You are what this is not, though this is all you'll know to be your home. If swimming through space I saw the blue knot of the planet floating in what it's not, I might feel like I'd been furled in waves, myself unfurling from the fixed knot of what I know myself to be, this knot of particular matter. In the folds of myself, emergent aqueous folds, I tack toward the offing of what I'm not, 
or everything that is unwinds to be wound into new signatures, that too will be unwound. Knowing this seals the gravity of the wound one feels. A black hole's all imploding knot would be the outward figure of this wound if, someone, if somehow the scales could be wound and wound into a gold intricacy of home that, by naming it, could cicatrize the wound. Scale down. Follow to where the strings are wound. No, wind what is, was, what will be in waves, the melisma in which the worlds are wound. Let light's light motif enwind you in its fold. There is only this extravagance as it unfolds. Along the shore, the sand grains wash and folds. Micron by micron they rose, will be wound down by forces that keep all in their fold. I feel like fell on the brink beyond her fold. How is it all things are what they are not? And Claude and spirit run back to the fold of Blake's imagined world. The beach unfolds in broken symmetries, an expanse of home, shattered shells, shattered stones. Away from home, families tour the wharf, invisible folds from wood end ruffle the air in waves. A young girl kneels along the lulling waves. Why do we come at dusk to worship waves when night makes plain its penchant to unfold? I'd know the name in which all things are wound. I wish I knew this vastness I am not, its everlasting flow. Light is always home. For those, that's a canzone. It's like a sestina on steroids. <laughs> this is called Late Bloomer, the last poem. Something whispered I wanted more of myself. That's how I turned into the floor of myself. The lake, the ripples shimmer, that lilting face. I'll guzzle the infinite pour of myself. What is this flow I feel, its course through soft bone, the current, the mother load, the ore of myself? Fill me with all things, empty me completely. I winnow and still am the store of myself. Imagine earth, the stars, all space expanding and finding everywhere the core of myself. If soul's estate means a mansion's many rooms, then someday I will take a tour of myself. Do you think me insane, my hypocrite twin, a catatonic stare, the whore of myself? Call me this, call me that, call me what you will. I surpass beyond words the lore of myself. Time blooms with space and there sums all I am. I am forever the before of myself. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty, beauty is truth. X to nth power is the shore of myself. Narcissus, the name a wind passing through wind. Now watch me step through the door of myself. as though I'm perfect timing for the next downpour, but that's all right. That's all right. My name is Monique Adele, and um, thank you. I'm going to read the first couple poems from um, a recent book uh, that was published of mine by Jakar Press. And this first poem, someone else read about their grandmother. I'm going to follow in suit. It's called Making Music of Her. And this is a true story about my grandmother singing to some cows in a valley. My grandmother sang to a valley of cows. When she speaks of it, her neck like a bow bent over the bridge of a violin's throat lifts awake. And the horizon between her lips cracks open with the light of her speech. Girl! Did I tell you about the time I sang to a valley full of cows? Huh. They looked up stunned, mouth open, wondering where all that noise was coming from. 
She speaks of song echoing caverns, black rock singing, breath breathing over spines, new to the beauty and the wind of hymns. I know then that I want to keep her here with me in the gentle cage of this life. She coughs, a stampede of hooves along her spine roils her limbs to a chorus of mmm, slipping out like a prayer, and she is, again, a tiny heap. So the next poem I'm gonna read from here is, um, this is called Tribute, and it's a response, my response to the, the frequent death of, of young black men in particular. Um, and I did it from the perspective of the mothers. You all are so brave, nobody's even moving. <laughs> uh, from the mothers, so it's called Tribute. We are the mothers, uncombed, unpressed, and weary of shrieking, gray face with death and dust, to dust, to dust, to dust, funking our mouths, to dust, covering the seared flagellum of our sons. Who will wage war with the tour-worn wings and carcass left over after coyote teeth tear at the sinews, leaving us to hysteria and rotting? We are the mothers. We wear the faces of our sons on our breasts, our backs, our babies, our babies are hanging from Bronx windows. Our babies are hanging from penitentiary trees till amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Praise song for the broken baby's backs. Praise song for the baby's broken. Praise song for the broken. Prince of the power of the air, loose them, let them go. We are their mothers. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Oh, beautiful faces. Oh, beautiful city of marching higher, higher to that city not made by man's hands. Set our feet to marching. We are the mothers. We know our babies' hands, feet, fingers, toes. We count the years. We are the mothers. We know breaking. We know partum. We know crack open the body. We know blood. We know water. We know breaking through the life on the other side. So a couple of, I think I'm going to be quick, maybe one more, <laughs> um, for your sake. So I'm working on a new collection that deals with, um, I'm expecting an, uh, my next child, and I, I find myself, you know, musing on the experience of pregnant enslaved women um, and their experience. So I've written a series of poems about that. This one is called Rock a Bye Baby. Rock a bye baby on the treetop. See from the treetop, tree wind blown anemone. See of the sea slap and hiss. Take possession of one more tree in a family of tree. One more just born into the wet blue black winter. One more to sing of shuck by hands now blistered with blues, now I soothe with sassafras. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Rock, 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 Moses rock, Peter rock, holy. Sin passed through pages of middle passages. Let the life I live speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, rock this sweet, sweet earth cradle until I come forth blowing like wind, like last trumps, like shouts of Zion. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down to her knees, down, face down, belly down, and the bowl of ground is for her, carved to house her swell, while switch, swoon against her smooth back, Slit, slit until slick with her bleed out lash by lash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and down will come, baby, cradle and all. Thank you.
Hey everyone! <laughs> what a beautiful Thanks, day! <laughs> I'm just gonna read a couple. My name is Kevin McClellan. It was not that long ago that I reached me from where I speak now, not exactly whole. But the mountains were always there, the birds too. Also once mine, flightiness, and the nameless me. No, a wind that has yet to appear, and a scent. For you, I can't find exact words. Mountains, that I go on like this. Also birds, sometimes I don't mind. That I believe, tomorrow, a without from where you speak. in between the leaves dropping. By the time you, the sound of also my lengthening than the height of holding my breath under the bed without dinner continues, won't rid the memory against my window, the aluminum ladder lengthening to the roof, then the height, my father fell and the collision of tenses. Where were you? Earlier still, the loss of and a toy Crossing the undertone and downriver, my brother needs me, needs the beach, piggybacking his arms around another river. I am now, and but he lived, so tell me, can there be, open the window, sound of a sigh, must find a ladder, yet the birds. What happened in the night? What happened in the triangle of night? Why this sleeplessness? Trouble is the bird unable to sleep. You are a bird. We are all birds looking for treetops, but the birds have gone missing. Also missing your siblings. They have fallen through the ice. They are under water, looking up at the mountains. Perhaps the mountains are your parents or God, yet you don't believe. You are now underwater. Do you believe now? Because you're becoming colder. You think I'm numb from the cold, but what comes to mind is alive now. Are you your thoughts? Are you your thoughts underwater? Under ice? Under time? Under the mountains? Looking up at your parents? What are you responsible for? Your parents? What are you responsible for? The thoughts of your parents, which might also be yours. Thank you. So the afternoon writer's workshop will begin shortly. Where will it be? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was experiencing. Yeah, that was not.